Hello Romas, this is Aromi here. Welcome back to Changeling. We're here about to head out to go meet up with Ali after um Well before we finish up our conversation with Spencer. Or we're done. We're done. We're done. Hi Helen! I was expecting to find Ali with you and then Jason? All three of them were waiting for me on this treed path that ran alongside the road. There was a thin veil of trees that shielded it from the view of the street. On the other side was just woods. Hey! How are things? Well, normal, I guess. He's only being weird at night. It's usually before 3 a.m. Which, I mean, I guess that just aligns with what I thought about the fae being involved. As soon as it hits 3, everything goes back to normal. Sounds about right for fairies. I even tried to kind of test them a bit earlier. Test? Well, I did that, you know, eggshell thing where you boil water in front of a changeling? You did the eggshell test? He broke into laughter at that, so much so that he actually had to turn away to collect himself a bit. Hey, I'm desperate for answers here. It was the only changing test I could remember. You wouldn't stop laughing, it's me. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just have heard of, of someone actually trying that. I punched him on the arm, but it made him laugh harder. You're such a creep. Okay, okay, now this isn't helping. Jeez, Yuan. Sorry. He was still laughing quietly to himself, though. And he didn't look sorry at all. What's the plan exactly? Well, I do think we should get you out of the house. Separating two of you means we'll confirm it's you they want. And hopefully exactly what they're- Oh shit, what the fuck? <laughs> exactly what they're up to. I mean, we're assuming they're trying to use him to drag you out of their room or something. They might just be harassing you. And we're dealing with Faye. We can't discount the possibility they're up to something totally different. Their motives are tricky to guess. That's all good and well, but how are you going to convince my parents to let me leave? They don't care about fairies and paranormal things. They care about school nights and homework. Well, you're sick right now, so that helps. We'll just be giving you a replacement. A what now? A replacement. No, I heard you, but what? Well, he's very glamour to disguise someone else as you. Who? Jason? Now stay at your place at least overnight and observe the situation. You can be in touch with them over text. Wait, so it's not you that's going to replace me? Wait, she said glamour. I looked at you dubiously. It's not going to be me. I'm just here to do the setup. Jason? Yep, I figured it would be Jason. Sorry, let me get this straight. Yuna is going to use fairy glamour to disguise Jason as me. Jason is going to spend at least one night in my house pretending to be me while I go elsewhere and send him tips and advice for the phone. Yeah, I mean, if you say it like that, it does sound kind of stupid. Like we're stuck in a really bad comedy. Hey, I had to come up with this plan on short notice. I kind of consider asking Brennan to stay in place, but no. <laughs> no, it's not going to work. Can you, I mean, Trace and I don't exactly look similar. Don't worry, I can handle at least that much. Don't say it as if making him look like me is an easy task. I also brought a fairy stone with me to help increase the magic effect. Look, Spencer has been saying I'm an imposter for five years, and now we're actually putting an imposter in the house with him. If he suspects anything, I'll be really careful. I don't know about this. Wouldn't it be better if he just stayed the night with me? Uh. <laughs> that sounds... I mean, he's a dude. Remember that. I. You think your mom would go for that while you're sick on a school night? No, but you could sneak you in. You think if Spencer saw that, he'd freak out less? No. Look, this isn't just to spy on him. It's to get you out of there, too. I think it's really important we split the two of you up and watch what happens. It's the only way to know for sure what they're up to. So, uh, wait, no, so, who they're after? As much as I don't want to say this, we can't ignore the possibility they're lashing out your family in anger. Seeing what they do when you're not there will really help us figure out what's going on. I'm not sure of another way to do it that won't alert your parents. It just seems extreme. Being kidnapped by fairies wasn't extreme. Well, it was. We need to know what's happening. What's happening? With some hate a few days away, especially. Okay, fine, fine. Let's do it. Need anything from me? Actually, we need a lock of hair. It's not totally necessary for the glamour spell, but it's going to work a lot better if you have something of yours when you and it sets it up. I wasn't sure how long, how I felt about giving some of my hair to a witch, a fairy, and a unicorn, but you literally just drag your fingers through your hair and. Okay, that was not a good example. Well, most of the time, if you drag your hair, fingers through your hair, maybe you'll get a, get a lock of hair. Nope, not this time either. But you know what? You, and these, <laughs> just, <laughs> you might have to just pluck my hair out. 
you totally doubtful about this. Well, a little. It'll be fine. I'll just snip some from underneath the back. Snip some? You don't need a single one? Okay, never mind. My trick wouldn't work. I let out a long sigh. Fine. I turned away and lifted the back of my hair. Still really unsure about it as Ali snipped some of my hair. I stood with my arms wrapped around myself as Drayson pulled his hair loose from the braid so Ewan and Ali could help him weave the lock of my hair into his own. It was all so, so weird, but I suppose it wasn't any weirder than anything else that had happened lately. Okay, all set. He glanced up at the sky. Noon isn't the best time of day to cast fairy magic, but I guess we don't have much choice. He held his hands up in front of Jason's face, concentrating. Ali stepped back, giving him room. And then... That's so fucking weird. Uh, it's so fucking weird seeing myself right there with me right here. Um, what do you think? This is creepy. I'm creepy? That's not... No, no, you're not creepy. I'm sorry, it's just weird seeing my myself like this. I seriously couldn't handle him at all. I just sighed as I studied him, trying really hard to not think about all the implications of him looking like me. Well, you did a good job. Thanks. Jason tipped his head to the side, wearing a really, really not me sort of expression as he watched me. Then his eyes, uh, my eyes, went really wide. Someone's coming. I think it's Winston. Who's Winston? I didn't even get the sentence out all the way. You enclosed the distance between us and hooking one arm around my waist, basically leapt into the trees with me before shoving me into the underbrush. Uh, what the fuck? King Kong? <laughs> I lay under him completely winded as I listened to Ali follow us a little more slowly, and sounding suspiciously like she's trying not to laugh. At least we got hidden just in time, though. There you are. I thought you were going for a short walk. Wait, did he just call Spencer... Winston? Uh, yep. I stared at you and who was kind of crouching above me as he silently face palmed. Why are you calling him Winston? Next to us, Allie was biting her hand to keep from laughing. My doubts that Drace could pull this off is just skyrocketed. Though I was at least. Wait, you. Th wait, he thought Spencer's name was Winston. <laughs> Though I was at least glad we got off the path before he saw us both. I couldn't imagine what would happen if. Does Drayson have my voice or this thing gonna work? Happened if Spencer showed up and there were two of me. Very funny. Mom has been texting. She wants you home and in bed. Now. Oh, right. Yeah, I was just coming back. I'm feeling pretty, you know, tired and sick and stuff. He coughed awkwardly. I'm going to kill you. Spencer was silent for a minute. I could totally imagine the look on his face. Whatever, just get home. Right, right away. Oh, let's walk together. I've never sounded that chipper in my life. Their footsteps started to fade as they started back to the house together. He doesn't have my phone. How is this working? What the heck are you doing? Get off me. I just wanted to hold your hand a little. What the heck is wrong with you? What? But we're brother and sister, right? <laughs> Not that kind. Not anymore. Their voices faded and I let out a strangled groan. If Spencer makes him cry, you have my permission to hit him just once. Jason will be fine. He looked around the tree then stood, pulling my feet pulling me to my feet as well. Sorry about that, I might have panicked. I noticed. We both looked at Allie, who, who was still crouched down by a tree, her shoulders shaking. She looked up at, <laughs> at his tears forming as the giggles finally started. It wasn't that funny. I hope you realize this is a serious situation, Allie. But he tried to hold hands. She could barely breathe. She was laughing so hard at this point. I say we just leave her here. I'm for it. We both started to climb back onto the path. Allie scrambled after us, finally managed to get a hold of herself. I glanced back toward the house worriedly. Will he really be alright? I know he seems like an airhead. He's just immature though. He'll be fine. He's really sensitive to fame magic, so despite appearances, he's the perfect person to put in there to figure out what they're doing to your brother. I hope you're right. Let's get you situated for the night. I think it's going to be a long one. No kidding. I cast another long look toward the house, toward home, as the three of us started away. I was really, really, I just really, really hope this actually helped us learn something and just end this all for good. Chapter 8, Night at the Club Room. I assumed that's where it was going to be. You and I arrived to the club room alone. Allie stopped, October 25th, stopped on the way to get something to eat. Since I hadn't had lunch, and neither had she. Since she'd been running around preparing for Operation Fake Michiko or whatever. The club was empty, not surprising since everyone was probably still in class. School was about to end, so presumably they'd be showing up soon too. It feels sort of weird arriving like this, though through the courtyard in the middle of the day. At this point, it's going to be better if you just get used to the weird. 
yeah, still struggling with it, which is weird in itself, considering everything that's happened. I flopped on the sofa and tipped my head back with a sigh. I feel bad that you guys missed class to deal with my issues. It's not that big a deal. And you didn't have a reading partner in literature the last couple of days either. Sorry about that. I didn't go anyway. What? Why? I knew for a fact that he'd been skipping enough that his grade was in peril, and he just started showing up again. I thought it was because of Miss Roberts' threat. You and looked away awkwardly. You weren't there, so... <laughs> You're so cute! You were showing up just because of me. I mean, I didn't mind it when I had a decent reading partner. What's your issue with literature anyway? You really hate reading that much? I don't mind it in general, it's just, it's the plays that bother me, that's all. Brings back memories I don't really care to dwell on. Oh, right, we still don't know the situation. I chewed my lip thinking about it, plays, and memories he didn't like to dwell on. Giving up on performing had really been a struggle for him, hadn't it? I knew some people might be dismissive of a kid's interest and a lost dream, but at the same time, sometimes the most passionate people develop their interests when they were quite young. I've been drawing on my life and it was just something I couldn't even fathom losing. I mean, if I suddenly couldn't do art anymore for some reason, I'd be devastated. It was my thing. It was part of what made me me. I couldn't not paint. I'd read a book once that they that said being an artist was about having a scream inside you that wanted to wanted you wait, what wanted to get out in a special way. And it truly was like that for me. Like, there was something that came from deep inside, something I couldn't ignore. I imagine you and try to perform and love for being on stage were probably similar. Being in a situation where he couldn't risk putting himself in front of other people, in front of a lot of people meant losing that. I'm sure it had to be devastating. Can I ask now? Can I ask now? Let's try to ask. You and... Is it okay to ask about what happened back then? Maybe it was just curiosity or being nosy, but part of it was just wanting to know more about him. And I can now actually ask him with him here and not from other people. And wondering if there was some way I could help you inside. I almost expected him to say no, but instead he slouched next to me on the sofa and ran a hand through his hair. Well, it's not some huge secret or anything, I just don't really like talking about it. You don't have to then. I mean, you don't have to talk about it if it's difficult. He shot me a crooked smile. It's okay. It was just pretty awful. Basically, I was with a local theater company, people who were serious about acting, not just hobbyists. I mean, I'd done lessons, classes. I just really loved being on stage back then. Everything about it was fun, exciting. Anyway, we were rehearsing an original play by the owner and had one of the lead roles. The schedule was pretty rigorous, but it was in the summer, so it was fine. But I was pretty exhausted during the opening week. I remember it was a weekend performance. I've been feeling kind of weird all day. Just, I don't know, sluggish, foggy. I thought I was coming down with something. I mean, until that point, I'd shown no fake traits. We assumed I hadn't inherited enough of my dad's fake blood to be more than a human with some magic talent. And I was fine with that. I mean, my dad was okay. But based on what I knew about Faye at, at that time, I had no interest in being one of them. My experiences with them had been great. Turns out I wasn't getting sick. My Faye heritage would just suddenly decide to assert itself in the most, in the worst way at the worst possible time. I passed out on stage mid-performance. And by passed out, I mean I hit the floor and my head went rolling. Exited stage left. And the rest of me just lay there with green smoke pouring out. I was too out of it to remember much. I freaked, obviously. Fortunately, my parents were there that night. I came to with my dad, dragging my body through the alley behind the theater. My stupid head under his arm. Mom tried to contain the damage until the local agency got there but it was a major incident the con containment and control uh, uh, con control unit had to chase down dozens of people stop the police reports erase memories keep an eye on news outlets to make sure the story is contained they had to check down all the pictures videos it was just an ordeal they con concocted the story that I was badly injured on set so i guess that part turned out fine it was another story in the news cycle to everyone else i didn't leave my room for two weeks trying to figure out how to control this stupid ability quickly realized I can't not yet I was terrified it would happen again dropped the play completely thinking I'd go back when I got control and I never did there were several smaller incidents at school I tried my best to just go on living normally but after the first few encore appearances with a headless actor I just started to isolate yourself it gave him he gave me a long look yeah that my family eventually moved mom wanted to give me a fresh start somewhere else or whatever yeah I know how that goes. Um, will you ever get control? I don't think so. 
Maybe somewhat, but at least you have people understand now. People who won't freak out no matter what happens. You fainted. Bitch, let's not talk about me. Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about me. I'm an exception, okay? I already had a lot to deal with that day. That was, I was having a bad day and I only fainted once. Thank you very much. Just because we're all in this club together doesn't mean we understand each other. If you think I get what it's like to crave blood or have my entire body transform at night, you're wrong. Everyone here understands the frustration of not being normal, of, of having to keep part of yourself a secret. But no one can really understand what it's like to deal with my problems. But this is where we're actually going to stop for today. You win. We are here for you. I hope you know that. I hope we're not going to get friend zoned. Because <laughs> that would suck. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your girlfriend. <laughs> I can be both actually. If you want that too. I don't know. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you guys in the next one.